So uh, carrying on from the scene in uh, part one, I set up this uh, kind of simple fence here and it's got a material on it with an alpha kind of mask. So if I just render the scene, you can see it's kind of, um, it's transparent where the holes are. And uh, what I did was I um, placed the backlight behind this fence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt R to bring up the region render tool. And I'm just going to move it over here where my fence is. Like that. And I'm just going to dial this up to increase the quality. This little arrow here. I'm actually going to put it all the way. The system's fast enough, I think. And uh, so I'm going to look at the first type of shadow. So that's the backlight. Um, it's behind the fence and we haven't got any shadow selected yet. So first I'm going to choose shadow map soft. And we can't really see anything. So I'm just going to dial up the intensity maybe. And you can start to see the shadow there slightly. I'm just going to dial up the intensity a bit more. And um, I mean that looks too blurry almost so I'm going to go into the shadow settings here, the shadows tab and I'm going to see what I can do. Now the thing with shadow um, maps is it actually is a shadow map, it is like a texture map and as you can see this is set to 250 by 250 pixels which is really low res so I'm just going to bump this up a lot higher and now we can start to see the shadow a lot better. And uh, we've also got this option here called Sample Radius, and this is basically blurriness. So if I increase this to uh, 12, say, something extreme, you can see the shadow um, becoming really blurry. And if I reduce it down to 1, it's going to get a lot sharper. And you want to find the balance between your shadow map size and the sample radius. As you can see, that's quite crisp now, and I could go up to 2000 by 2000. And as you can see, the shadow is a lot sharper now. I might just bring this down slightly so it renders a bit quicker. Or uh, maybe not. It's actually looking quite good there. So that's the shadow map setting. And the advantages of this is it's very fast. As you can see, it calculates almost, well, not instantly, but that's a pretty quick calculation. The downside is uh, it can use a lot of memory. You can see the memory usage here, 192 megs. So imagine you have like five of these lights in the scene. That could quickly add up to uh, several gigabytes of memory. So uh, that's the only downside. But uh, they're pretty handy. So the next uh, shadow type is, if I just go back to um, general, I'm going to set it to uh, ray traced hard shadows. And you can see straight away, this is a very kind of sharp shadow. And if we go to the shadow tab, we can see that we don't have that many uh, settings. We've just got density, color, transparency. Now, if I uncheck transparency, it basically doesn't take into account the material and it's just kind of calculating using that object. And the object here is just like a flat plane. It's not actually like um, a geometry object, this fence, it's just a square. So uh, what it's basically doing is it's using the object to cast the shadow. So if you've got any kind of transparent materials, you want to check this here. And the density is obviously, is kind of like the shadow strength. So if I bring this down, we can see that we've achieved kind of a more transparent effect. It can help add a bit of realism. And the color obviously uh, tints the kind of shadow. So if I make that red, it's going to tint the shadow kind of red slightly as you can see. So it's got a red tint on it. So the final uh, shadow type I want to show you is the area shadows. So if we just select area and we'll watch this uh, render here. As you can see it takes a lot longer to calculate uh, area shadows and the effect is quite blurry. Generally um, area shadows they kind of start off really sharp and then kind of spread out and get fuzzier and fuzzier. So um, if we want to sharpen the shadow, what we want to do is we want to go to details and then this XY size is basically the size of the area light here. So as you can see this is a very large area which is causing the shadows to be uh, really soft basically. So if I reduce this size down to say 5 by 5 
uh, the shadows should become a lot kind of sharper. And as you can see, they start out really sharp and then they kind of start to kind of get blurrier um, as the distance kind of progresses. And uh, I might just increase this to maybe 8 by 8 to show the effect off a bit more. So as you can see, uh, these are very kind of realistic shadows, but they take a long time to kind of calculate. So the last thing I want to show you is this uh, shadow caster option. And what this does is it enables us to basically uh, just cast a shadow with no kind of light um, diffusion or illumination. So if I just check this, what we're getting is basically just the shadow and it's as if that light doesn't even exist but we get the effects of its shadow so this can be kind of handy if you're setting up like a complicated scene with lots of trees and you're trying to you're trying to basically kind of set the atmosphere uh, this is an option that can help you create some kind of you know stylish effects so that's basically it uh, for this chapter and in the next chapter we're going to take a look at ambient occlusion. So I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.